Leslie Bickle from Vacaville, California. My name, you already know this. I've been judging since 2008. I've been running dog and agility in USDA only since 2000. What kind of dogs do you run? I run Catahoula Leopard dogs. Yay. <laughs> so we're here at the Northwest Regional, and yesterday you did Masters Challenge Jumpers. Uh, tell me a little bit about the philosophy behind the challenge classes in general, just a basic overview. Well, it's my understanding is it's supposed to be a level above the titling classes. So for this course that we ran yesterday, what were some of the challenges you presented to the handlers? There were some a spacing challenge between the jumps, so the minimum spacing, there was a, lot, a distance challenge, there was a fairly independent tough weave entrance, uh, there, were a, there was a pull through, and a few bypasses. I try to avoid backsides because that seems to be the trend. So a lot of people thought from the weave pulls to that following jump was the backside. Was that technically a true backside? No, it was more like a 270 if the, because the dog was already coming out. On the, we have one today in the, our master's standard course where the dog is coming out on the side, so it's kind of a cheaty backside. Did you do anything different when you did, were thinking about designing this course because this was a regional when you designed this no, challenge class? not really. But the titling classes should not, should be at the same level that you would expect to see at a local trial, in my opinion. So, did your challenge jumpers class, did it run the way you expected it to? to I do? didn't expect so many dogs to not make that jump, the jump after the lead, because that was surprising. No, I think there was, the challenges were evenly distributed. I didn't really see a particular, and you were watching as well and taping, a particular part of the course where everyone had an issue, which is also, I think, a good measure of the course that there's not one place where everyone just gets slaughtered. Well, and it didn't seem to favor big dogs over little dogs either. The no, no. That, and that's what I try to work with because often, they present different challenges just because a small dog will have a cover. Yeah, in some courses, in one area, a small dog would be more affected than a big dog and vice versa in other areas, but this Try course... even things out. So the, the weed pole entrances um, you mentioned were a tough uh, entrance. Can you describe what, what led up to that to get to that entrance? Well, they had a serpentine for three jumps and there was minimal spacing between the last two jumps of the serpentine and then they were threatened by the finish jump being fairly close to the weaves and so they, I think people were worried about, they got worried about something and were pressing things when they maybe didn't have to. Now what about the, the, the pass-throughs that you talked about? Where were those on the course? Well we had a bypass to the, um, there was a bypass of the tunnel entrance from two to three and then there were a few bypasses to tunnel entrances that they were pointed directly at. At the, the top end of the course, there is um, like a, a, a long 270. Describe that area a little bit and, and how they handled that. <laughs> there were different levels of success at the handling, and that was interesting to watch because some dogs did kind of cut in and could have actually handled it from the other, come in through and not gotten threatened by the refusal because you had never begun the approach. So, yes, that was amazing that dogs weren't supported when that was seeming to be a fairly easy because of the spacing. And I was a little bit surprised. That was one of the back sides, but... So were there any other surprises on the course where you thought dogs shouldn't have a problem and they did? The, the surf to the weaves was it, the, that jumping sequence. I thought that was more problematic than I had expected. I just want to put something out there that's flowing and sometimes master's challenges. You have to be careful that it stays flowing but you still get different challenges in it. If you're uh, entering a challenge class, do you have any advice? Uh, what should people expect if they're, if they're thinking about entering and they're not sure if they should or not? What kind of advice could you give them? I think you should enter. You enter and see how it goes. So, one last question about regional competition yes. in general. If, if somebody's there's the, obviously we know the benefits of entering a regional, but if you're not sure about it because you think the competition's going to be above you or, or you're just 
self-conscious about it. What advice can you give somebody about entering a regional? Everyone that is at the regional, where whatever level you're at, they've all had the same problems no matter who they are. And people forget that. The judge that's sitting out in the ring has had the same issues you are having with your dog. You always need to keep that in mind. Because, and if anyone's laughing, it's probably not at you, it's with you because we've all been there before. That's awesome. That's it, you're done. I'll ask the question again. <laughs>